Okay, we're up here fishing northern Pennsylvania. The big trout has been slamming them on the nymphs. We've had several good days of fishing, and uh, we're going to give you a quick little orientation to what a lot of people call bobber fishing, also using a strike indicator, or it's also known as suspension nymphing. Drive has a nice run here in front of them, you're going to see coming down through. You can see the green water, and the fish are laying in that green water. He's picked up at least oh, 15 to 20 fish so far in this whole section, and he's going to run his nip down through there, and we're going to see if he can hook up some Drive, more. why don't you show us what you're using today? I have a size 16 stonefly. Just a and little stonefly imitation. I have about 18 inches of line with a split in between. And then I have a sulfur that I tied. I don't know if you can see the underbelly. It's chewed up. I've caught quite a few on it. All right, let's give her a try. We'll keep the camera rolling and see if we can get some hookups on video. Nothing fancy to the cast. And boom, right off the bat. As soon as he casts in, hooks up with the fish. That was on the sulfur, which is his top nymph. That appears to be a rainbow trout. We've caught rainbow, rookies, and brown. I actually found a big flat run up above this, and I caught probably 15 to 20 on a dry fly on a caddis, tan caddis, size 16. But the big trout has been hitting the nymph in water with the lively legs, and he's been he's been doing really well. There's another one, Big Trav. Once again on his top nymph. And rookie. As he's out of that back eddy, he should get a nice little slow drift past those fish. Give him an option, and bam, he's got one. Oh, quick release button. Stuck in the back eddy, it seems like some fish are sitting back here. It's hard to get a drift through and make your nymphs look natural. As soon as he gets out of that back eddy, pulls it back into the run, like right there. Fish are sitting all through here. There must be a lot of nymphs. They're feeding, and just like that, he's got another fish. And that's the trick. You find out where the food is, that's where the fish move into, and right now, they're in the runs. The runs are full of nymphs. We found a lot of sulfur nymphs, March browns, golden stone flies. That's what we're using, and that's what's working. You kick her out. Can't beat the barbless hooks. These fish are just sitting up here feeding, and it's making the fisherman's job easy. The big tribe continues to just catch tons and tons of fish on these lively legs, sulfurs, golden stones, and the mark brown isn't working as well here. We flipped some rocks and we found them, but it just doesn't seem to be working as well. So for some reason, these fish are pounding anything that has a little bit of a yellow or gold to it. There we go, tribe. The big tribe is on fire today. Took us a little while to find out where they're sitting, but once we did, it has been some good nymph fishing. It seems like the fish are stacked up and feeding. And they're feeding good. If we can get back to back cast drive, pressure's on. There it is, you got it. He 
got to see the shot set up. Like he said before, he's got some split shot on. He has a strike indicator slash bobber on, suspension nymphing. I know a lot of guys won't do this, but we have a lot of success with it. Up, had a hit. And uh, we like catching fish, so we continue to use them where we think it's necessary to use a strike indicator. Slower runs like this, we tend to do better with them, so that's what we use. There you go. Man, Shrive, I'm surprised you didn't pull the lips off that one. That was a hook set. One other thing I want to point out, the big Shrive set in the hook, and if you notice, oh, excuse me, slipped on a rock. If you notice, the stream flowing from our left to right. He's setting the hook the way the current's going. As fish are sitting with their heads facing up current, the food's coming down in, you set the hook against them, you really get a nice deep hook set in that corner. Nice size bow, too. Yes, it is. If you pull against the grain upstream, a lot of times you can pull your nymph right out of their mouth. So keep that in mind, anybody who's new to nymph fishing or fishing in general, if you can, if you're set up right, you want to pull with the current and really dig that hook deep into the fish's mouth. Now watch your drag set because what will happen a lot of times and watch holding your line, you pull hard, that fish runs at the same time, you can snap off. Oh, Trav just missed a couple on those casts. So you have to be careful with it, you got to get ready for a fish to run, but if you pull with the current and you pull right into the corner of their mouth, you can get a real nice deep hook set and it uh, tends to work a lot better. Especially when you're fishing barbless, you want to really get that hook in there deep. The big shrive strikes again. Caught a lot of brownies earlier. Seems like it's turned into bows and brookies. Can't really tell what he has on there yet, but that one might be a brownie, that's why I bring that up. Looked like I saw some big black dots on it. Looks like there's a little bit of a golden color to it as well. You got a brownie. Put your hands up, give her a little hold up on that one, Shrive. Nice to see a brownie again. Beautiful fish. That's a nicer looking one. I think that one... That might be a brookie there. We just got that brownie release. This one looks like it has a little more color like a brook. That is a PA Brookie. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, a little bit beat up. He's a little fresher stock. All right, Trav, we got a brown trout, a brook trout. Now the challenge is gonna be getting a rainbow on this cast. Oh, whoa, there he is. And I think this is the rainbow. Took a couple more casts. Looks like a little dink, but... The brown, brookie, rainbow combination. And I think you get the point. Indicator, suspension, bobber fishing can be very effective, a lot of fun. You know some guys will poke fun at it, say they wouldn't do it. We enjoy it. We're by no means professionals, but we like catching fish. Okay, the big tribe's gonna film me. We found a bunch of brookies sitting in the low water. He's gonna show this run it's coming down through, and it's really deep, and there's some rainbow and brown trout in it. But right under here, if you look at my rod tip, right down here, underneath that limb and down below it, I mean, that water's only this deep. And there's some brookies sitting in it. We're gonna see if we can get a couple of hookups on here. There's one. Oh boy, that's a tail slapper. Got off. Okay, that was a nice size brookie. I must have had a weak spot in my line down towards my nymph. He broke me off right there. So we're going to see if we can hook up with another one. Same thing. Can you get right underneath that branch? There we go. There's a couple hits. 
down through under that branch again. Another swing and a miss. A lot of people think in this situation that they're hitting the bottom. But I know those are fish. There's one. Another nice looking brook trout. It's just loaded with brook trout. They sit in that low water. There's nymphs in there, they're feeding. Okay, see if we can hook up with another one here. While they're cooperating, we have a little rain moving in right now, so hopefully it doesn't completely mess the fishing up, but cast under there, bend the line back, watch for that thing to stop. Miss. There's one. That water out there isn't much deeper than the water I'm kneeling in right now. Maybe twice this depth, we're probably looking at at tops eight inches of water. And another nice looking rookie. Take a good look at him. Come here a second, Shroff. That there's a beauty. Dark. Let's see if we can get him to stop jumping around. That's a beauty right there. <laughs> 